Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to use the Drone Zone website to get airspace authorization. So hold on. If you're like me and you live in an area where you don't have Lance, yes, can you believe that? Yes, my airport does not support Lance. So for me to get airspace authorization, I have to go through the Drone Zone. Well, my entire town is class E to surface airspace, which means I have to have air traffic control authorization from the ground up. So even in my own backyard, I can't fly. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I do uh, the drone zone method to get airspace authorization. So let's get started. We are at the FAA drone zones website. If you haven't been here yet, you need to go get your drone registered, get yourself registered. If you're a Part 107 flyer, you should already be registered. Um, if you live in an area like I do, you do not have that does not have Lance. This is the only way that you can, that I know of, that you can get a, a authorization to fly in controlled airspace. Okay, so I'm gonna click on my my dashboard. And what you would do is you go down here to create part 107 waiver authorization. Okay. Um, but I'm going to show you some of mine that have been approved and how I did it. Okay. So I want to actually, let me go back. I want to show you some that have been approved and have expired. And I have one draft that I've done. Actually, I'm going to use the draft. So, Let's go over here to the draft, YouTube demo. I've already clicked on create. I'm going to pull this up and it's going to tell me, I'm going to come over here to acknowledgement. It's my, telling me who my responsible party is. You enter your name information, which is already be there. Click on next, click on the date you're wanting to fly. It could be one day, two days, a week. Click your time frame. If you know if you're not flying at night then don't click on nighttime flight okay for me I'm just using this as an uh, example so I'm gonna pretend like I'm flying I'm gonna fly every day for three days in controlled airspace at this location right here okay we're gonna pretend that there is a subdivision being built in Podunk Town Texas and it helps very much so to have your coordinates available of this area. Your maximum altitude right here, 100 foot, that's about all you're going to need to film a pile of dirt. And then it's going to ask for your latitude here and longitude down to the last second. Okay. How much of a flight area do you want? Click on the drop down menu. And you can get anywhere from two to three miles. You can also request a blanket area or wide area. Um, so it all depends on what you're wanting. My nearest airport, you got to know the nearest airport and the class of airspace you will be flying in. So your proposed operation, you type in all of this uh, big fancy wording to make yourself look like you are extremely intelligent. Basically you're just summing up how you're going to fly safely and what your plans are with the particular flight. Best thing I can tell you is make sure you put in every detail that you have. So for example I'm hired by such and such company to film progression video of a subdivision being built. The pilot in command has surveyed the area prior to the flight and the area is a wide open field with no obstructions or trees. There are no hills. It is a flat area. Okay. The pilot in command will be operating at a max of 100 foot AGL, which stands for above ground level for those of you who don't know. And we and will not fly the aircraft further than 1,000 feet away from the control center or the remote station or whatever you want to call it. It makes no difference. The pilot in command will also have a visual observer, and this is the important part, a visual observer maintaining visual line of sight with the aircraft and to notify the pilot in command of incoming manned aircraft. 
The craft is equipped with two FAA compliant visual strobes, which will be activated during the flight. Hey, that's a safety regulation or safety precaution you're taking, so list it. Okay. If line of sight with the craft is lost, the pilot in command will utilize the drone's return to home function on their remote. The pilot in command also has a visual map of the flight and can also use the map data to backtrack the craft to home. I will fly during the early morning hours where air traffic at this location is light to non-existent because this is a smaller airport. It's not Dallas-Fort Worth International. It's just a small town airport. Um, and if you fly like on a, especially like on a Sunday morning where there's like nobody out there flying in the area, you're more likely to get an approval. If during the flight a manned aircraft enters the area, the pilot in command will land the craft immediately. The flight is scheduled to last no longer than 45 minutes. So having these things is definitely helpful to convince them to let you fly. Is there a pending or approved waiver or authorization? As you can see right here, um, in this particular instance, I'm going to click no. If you click yes, it will give you the option to attach um, previous um, waivers and authorizations to this request to show them, hey, you've flown it before or you've flown another air con controlled airspace before and you had good, you were successful and no problems. And so it'll be more convincing. So, but for this particular flight, I'm going to say no. I'm going to click on next. And then it's going to give me a review. Now, if you look here in this right here, add attachment. I learned this one the hard way. What you can do is go to Google Earth or whatever you want to use, it doesn't matter, and get a satellite photo of your proposed flight area and attach it to your request. So like that. So the either area in yellow is the area that I want to fly in. As you can see, it's controlled airspace, uh, 100 foot max over here, but on this side it's 200 foot. So I'm just going to do 100 foot and be done. I'm not going to get too picky about it. And of course, the coordinates on here aren't the same as what was in my request because I'm just using this as an example. This is not the actual place, so please keep that in mind. Okay. All right, let's close that out and go back to what we were doing beforehand. Responsible party, all of your parameters, everything. And when you're done entering all of this information, you click on submit. You have to know your latitude and longitude for these requests. I guarantee you it will be an automatic refusal if you don't even have that. Okay, so please make sure you have that, guys. All right. Um, click submit and then you wait. Okay, and that's all you can do after that is wait. And sometimes it can take a week. Sometimes it takes four days. Sometimes it takes two weeks. Some, sometimes I'll tell you it take 90 days. It all depends, okay? That's the problem. Um, if you don't live in an area that has Lance, okay? So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the, in the description or in the comment section below. Don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Um, I really appreciate everybody's support. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, later.